Welcome to Lexon Photography and welcome to a very special edition. Welcome to the review of the Canon 60 Mark I. Now it's a great question to ask why do you review the camera in 2019 when it's a 2012 camera? And the reason is I started photography in 2013, in September 2013 as my main job and I bought the Canon 60 in that month to start my photography career with this camera. That's now over five years ago. I've taken over 900,000 images with this camera and over 400,000 images with this camera. These are both the Canon 6D. I have two of them. This is how I go to a wedding with two hanging around my body with prime lenses. And I want to give you my experience. This is a real world review. You could say a user experience after over 1 million and some 100,000 images. And I haven't given a review about it, so now it's time to do that. <laughs> so it's a great start in 2019, I think, to look back how it all started. And for me, it started with this camera. This is the camera that made everything possible for me. Uh, everything I have, I earned the money with this camera. So it's very special. And to give you an idea where I stand, I, I give you uh, the cameras that I own and that I had. So you have an idea where I am in photography. So I started photography before 2013 and at the beginning 2013 I bought a cheap Canon uh, entry-level DSLR 550D T2i. I still use it to film me when I'm on the street shooting. So everything is broken on this camera. The autofocus doesn't work anymore. All the plastic parts are gone. Uh, it's really not beautiful anymore but I still have it, still use it for the filming myself when I'm on the streets. So that goes. That was the first camera. Then came the Canon 60, 2013, September. Second 60, two years, three years later, 2015, 2016. Then there came the Fuji X100T that I sold. Then the Fuji X-T20, which I also sold. Then the Canon 60 Mark II. So the predecessor, the, the new one, then the newer one than this, that's filming now with the autofocus to follow my face. So that's filming now the 60 Mark II. And uh, what else? We have the Hasselblad digital medium format camera. This is a Hasselblad H3D. Uh, a very big camera, very hefty, very expensive as well. So this is uh, this came then in the 60 Mark II. And we have some analog cameras, uh, a Canon one, another Canon one. This is the AE-1. It's a really nice one. Uh, a medium format, a Pentacon 6 TL, where everything is mechanic. It's a really nice camera as well. Uh, so that's what we got and what we had and I rented some cameras. I rented the Fuji X-T2, the Olympus OMD EM10 Mark III and the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV and the EOS R but that's just for one day. So that's where I am, that's what I know and that's what I've had. And now I have here two 60s around my body and this is still my main camera to use when I'm on the job. Now on the street photography I use the 60 Mark II. When I take pictures with my girlfriend, I use the 60 Mark II. Every time when it's not important, I use the 60 Mark II. Every time when I have a big shoot, I bring two cameras. I have them around me all the time with different prime lenses. And uh, it's the Canon 60. And especially for weddings, the reason why I still use the 60 and not the 60 Mark II is it's, this is more silent. Uh, than the uh, than the Mark II, and this is the, the one of the really bad things about the Mark II is the noise. Um, but let's talk about the Canon 6D, the first one. Now, when I take a picture here, let me just take a picture. It, it sounds like this. This is how the camera sounds and the regular noise. And it has a silent mode, and I have it on silent mode since I bought it, which is like this. And this is really quiet and even when I'm in a church or in a very small venue on a wedding, people don't hear the camera. It's very silent, it's very calm, quiet and that's important on a wedding. I'm not, I don't want to be seen, I don't want to be heard. 
in these important moments when everyone is looking at the couple, I don't want the camera to make noise at all. So this is still my main camera on a wedding day. And I just want to go through about how I use it and what's great about it and why I still use it. So let's start off with the durability and the body. Now I said I had this camera now for 2000, since 2013, five years, 2015, 16, that's two or three years. And taking 900,000 images and 400,000 images mixed together, 1,300,000 images or more. I will check again and put in the numbers here so you have the accurate numbers. Uh, and I never got these cameras cleaned. I never had a sensor cleaning. I never went to any clean and... Uh, and I never cleaned it myself. I never had it really cleaned, whether neither outside nor inside. So this is straight from the box, you could say. And I really use it in a bad condition. So I can show you now a video where I was in Amsterdam and it was raining. And I decided to go to Amsterdam for one day to photograph people on the streets. Five hour trip to Amsterdam in the morning, five hour trip by bus back to Germany. In the evening, in between, I took these shots. Here's the video. Towards uh, here, um, oh yeah, that is, yeah, yeah, perfect. And you can look a little bit down, maybe, maybe to your hand. Yeah. I think that's also nice. Just stay right there. That's <laughs> good. Maybe we can also come from this side. Oh, you have a very nice look. It's a very cool, cool outfit. Okay, okay. And uh, you can look a little bit over there. Oh, yeah. Do you have to take this train or this tram? No, I'm, I don't have a hurry. But okay. I, uh, I go home. And uh, you can also look a little bit down. Oh yeah, that's it. Look to your nose. To my nose? Yeah. Till uh, like uh, with my eyes. Uh... Yeah. That's good. That's fine. Goody, goody. Maybe one more from... Uh, I, I go there. Or when you also just stand here. So we have a little bit... Uh, different background and you look down the road and maybe um, from here. So let's maybe when you just stand here. Oh yeah, it's, that looks very, very wonderful. But it, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's, it's very nice. And you can just look down the road and hold the umbrella a little bit back. To, yeah, very nice. So, Do you come from here or? No, Korea. Oh, Seoul, Korea. Oh, so uh -huh. it's a long way. Huh? It is, it is very long. It's a long way. And maybe um, we can go here. Maybe when you uh, when you go like this uh, okay. and uh, I take a picture from here. Oh yeah. Also nice. And if you like you can uh, hold it down for a moment. Okay. Just, uh, just for some shots. Very nice. And you can look over, over there. And here you see, <laughs> it's raining, it's not really nice. It's, it's, a, it's a weird idea to take pictures of strangers on the streets with this weather. Who would say yes to that? But that's the challenge. And people did say yes to that. <laughs> and so for me, it's a great mem memory. And I think we got some nice images as well. And the camera, went through it 
and it never disappointed. I never got it clean. And to this day, I don't have any dirt on the sensor. Now, I also have a Canon 5D Mark I, which is an incredible camera. It's super cheap, three, under 300 euros. You can get it now on eBay. Incredible image quality, but there is dust on the sensor. So whenever you put the camera on and off, let's just take a look. Bum, 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 bum. So that we see it. So the camera's on and when I turn it off, it says cleaning the sensor. And I never really knew what that meant because I don't hear anything. It does, I always thought it doesn't do anything. It's just some uh, shutting down. I'm shutting down now. But actually, when I saw images from the Canon 5D Mark I, which I bought used, and I looked at the images on a big computer screen, I, I, I saw all these small spots, which are which is dirt on the sensor. And when I, when I look at this, there's a very big sensor in here, really, really big. Uh, when I zoom in into these uh, 39 megapixel, uh, when I zoom into these files, there's also dirt on the sensor. And uh, I mean, you can clean it and then it should be all good. But I really appreciate the, the cleaning the sensor in the camera works so well that I never needed to clean it in over five years. I never had any problem with dust or spots on the sensor. And I change lenses quite often. I do it on the, when I'm on the beach in Spain, I change lenses. And I know when I'm in, in Spain, on, on the beach, I make like, like this and it tastes like salt. And I know all the camera, there will all be salt because salt is in the air. When I change the lens, I know salt will get into the sensor, into the body on the sensor. And it's, it's really not good for the technology. And I know that and I do it anyway because I think, you know what, doesn't matter. Uh, it already paid off in a hundred, hundred ways. So it, it, if the cameras die today, it's totally fine. Then I can get a new one. And uh, so, so the quality of the, the build quality, I mean, you, I have this hanging around here. This, this hangs around. And when I'm on a wedding, this hits all the time against chairs and tables and against each other. When I'm on the dance floor a little bit dancing, uh, it's, it's hitting all the time with the flash on it. And uh, I mean, it's, it's not nice anymore. Everything here, everything falls a little bit apart. But after 900,000 images without me taking care of it at all. So that's the durability. Um, what about battery life? That's an interesting thing. It's very important to me. Sometimes I shoot weddings on a Friday and on a Saturday. And I take about 8,000 images on a wedding. Sometimes more, sometimes less. And sometimes on a Friday and on a Saturday. Which means I have 17,000 images sometimes on Sunday. And sometimes there are also shootings on Sunday. So battery life is one of the most important things for me when I come home. So I'm on weddings usually about 14 hours or longer. So I come at 10 to getting ready, making the hair, taking pictures of the dress. And I leave after midnight, always. I stay, I stay usually until one o'clock in the morning. And I'm home 1.30, two o'clock, sometimes later, depending where the wedding is. And um, I then copy all the images to hard drives, so I use fast SD cards, so I get 100 gigabyte transferred in 10 to 15 minutes. So it, if you don't have fast SD card, it can take hours. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a really terror when you stand there in the middle of the night and see it uh, taking two hours to copy the 100, 100 gigabytes. So I always use fast cards, super quick. And the battery, let me, sometimes, on a wedding, I took images of the screen. So you could, on the screen, you can see how much battery life do I still have here. And I took some images and it's really incredible that these old cameras and the batteries are old. I mean, the battery one is from 2013, the other is from 2015, 16, and I bought some other batteries. Um, but you, they hold always 2,000 images and very often two and a half thousand. And also often I can get 3,000 images. And then sometimes, especially on weddings, I get even more. I get 3,500 images, 3,800 images with one battery. Sometimes, but that's very rarely, that's once a year, I get 5,000 images or one battery. So when I come home, after having taken 8,000 shots, I only need to charge two batteries having taken 8,000 images. 
and that is ve I'm very thankful at night that I have fast SD cards and that I have the batteries that that will give me three and a half three and a half thousand images four thousand images. So the next day on Saturday, I have charged batteries. I mean, I can charge when I'm on location and. Uh, in the evening, so when I'm on the wedding and it's night, it's 10 o'clock at night I, and I battery is empty, I can charge it there. And I do that sometimes, but you know, there's always the possibility that you forget it and then you go home without it. And uh, I like to do it at home here, so it's very easy. And in the morning, everything is new and fresh. And uh, maybe about, you know, when you hear 8,000 images a wedding, is he crazy? Uh, I take more images with two cameras than if I only had one, and I always use primes. Here I have a 24 millimeter lens, here's a 135. Um, on the weddings, I have a three prime setup. 24 millimeter, 1.4 is the wide angle lens, 50 millimeter, 1.2 is the standard lens, 135, 2.0 is the telephoto lens. I have other lenses like the 85, 1.2, that stays at home, I don't need that. I have other lenses, like here's a Tamron zoom lens. I don't need that also. On the camera filming now is the Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4. Art lens, I don't need that either. I, I only, three lenses, 50, 135, and 24. And 260s, that's what brings me through the day with 8,000 images. And you know, people talk about speed. So how many images can a camera take? And cameras today can take 10 images per second, 20 images per second. And you hear now, the normal shutter speed is this. Which is, I think, four and a half pictures per second. And I always have it on silent mode and it's a little bit slower. It's like this. And all images I take, I always use the silent mode. And I don't know how many images that is, four, four images per second. But think about it. I have a camera that takes four images per second and I come home with 8,000 images. Imagine I had a camera that was faster. I would come home with many more images. So I'm very thankful that it's not super duper fast. And look at the images I take. Look at them and ask yourself, is he missing the shot? Am I missing the shot with this only small, uh, slow four images per second? Look at these images and ask yourself, did he miss the shot or did he get the shot? Was the camera too slow or was it fast enough? And I'm thankful that it's not faster because I don't want 8,000 images as a pain because it means I have to delete 6,000. So to get around 2,000 and then I start editing these 2,000. So, uh, I mean, I've, I've seen reviews where people just in the beginning say a 60 doesn't make sense because it only shoots for a half second, images per second. And it's so credible that you know, think about, I've taken 900,000 images with this camera. And with this camera, 900,000, and with this one, 400,000. Just think about, I made one euro or one dollar with this camera for one shot. And multiply it with 900,000. <laughs> that would be 900,000 dollars. That would be 900,000 euros. Now you can say, oh, you don't get money for every shot, so you probably don't get one euro per shot. But let's say 50 cent. That's still 450,000 dollars. Now that's not per year, that's over five years, so it's relative. Um, and even if you think, oh no, you don't get 50 cents per image, you take so many images of your girlfriend, you don't get paid for that. Well, actually, I, <laughs> I put these images up on uh, stock photography, Adobe Stock, and there I get much more than 50 cents or one euro for it. So it's more than that. Or just say I get 10 cents for an image. You can get 10 cents for an image and when you take 900,000, that's still 90,000. 90,000 dollars or euros for an image, for, for, for your pictures that you've taken with the under 2,000 euro camera. It's very incredible what's possible with this. So next point, autofocus. Now nowadays, cameras have face detection, like this one. This one captures my face wherever I am. And it's beautiful, it works fine. There's a flip out screen, so you see me looking over there instead of over there. So I see me. I see, it, it, am I in the frame or am I out of the frame? I see, am I here in the frame or am I out of the frame? I see, am I too close to the light source? Am I too bright? Am I too far away? Am I out, out of the light or am I 
okay with the light. Is my head okay here? That is all I see right now just because there's a flip out screen on the 6D Mark II. The 6D Mark I doesn't have that, doesn't matter, it's totally fine. The 6D is a very easy, simple camera to use. It's a small body, it's super light, it's very enjoyable to have, it's a small, it's an easy menu system. It's not overwhelming, so you get to everything easily. Battery, how much is the battery? You got that very easy, which, uh, which is the date and time, very easy. Uh, the image quality, very everything you find very easily. Uh, autofocus. So this camera has 11 autofocus points and they are all centered in the center. So this is a big uh, critique. People criticize the camera for being too narrow in the center with the autofocus. I always use the center focus point. Always. I never change it. The moment I change it to maybe to the left autofocus point or to the right autofocus point and I say I want to focus something, all autofocus points except for the center one are average. The quality and the speed and the accuracy are average. The center focus point is superb. The center, even in 2019, from my experience, is on a very, very high level. You hit nearly all the time the focus quickly, fast, super quick with the center focus point. So I focus with the center, then move the camera to the side, click. This is called focus and recompose. I first focus, I push the shutter through half, then I, the camera got the focus. Then I move it away and then click, take the picture. And I do this with all lenses. I have the 50 1.2, 135 2.0, 24 1.4, 35 1.4 filming. I have the big one, the 85, uh, 85 1.2, so all these all these lenses I use wide open using this technique. Focus and recompose with the center focus point. Now the 85 millimeter lens is a pain to use on this camera because at f1.2 it's so difficult to focus. I hit and miss and mostly miss. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a pain to use. But all other lenses you see here, 24, even 51.2 is easy to use with this technique. Focus, move, push the button. So in my opinion, the focus is incredible. All images you see, I use this technique. Focus, person in the middle, then to the side, then click. Or I just had the person in the middle and click, 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 like this. And then in post, I just crop it a little bit. So there's not, so I would, I would pho photograph like this. So the face is in the middle of the screen. And then I have too much headroom here. So I would cut it out so it would look like this. Okay, autofocus. What else? I love that there are, when well, the camera has 20 megapixel, and I love it that there are different sizes. So I have RAW, but I also have MRAW. Now RAW, in RAW I can shoot and I get 20 megapixel files. But sometimes that's enough, I, that's too much, I don't need that much. Sometimes I photograph something that's not so important, so I want to shoot smaller file sizes. So I got MRAW, which is only 11 megapixel, it's still the same area, it's not cropped in, it's the same view, but only 11 megapixels. Or as raw, I get 5 megapixels. So when I do street photography, photographing people on the streets, they can buy the images. I don't need 20 megapixels. I want to upload the images at the same evening and I want small file sizes. I will save the images anyways in small file size. 1, mega, one megabyte, 1.5 one megabyte, 2 megabyte. I don't need 20 megapixels. So I'm shooting in S RAW or MRAW. And in JPEG the same. I can choose any kind of JPEG file size. 20 megapixel, 8 and, and 9 megapixel, 5 megapixel, 2.5 megapixel. So this gives me, you know, I can go on holidays and shoot in MJPEG and get a couple of thousand images more than if I shot in RAW. And uh, I don't need that big file sizes all the time. I photograph nearly every day and I, it's, it's a lot of data when you always shoot in the biggest size and I don't need that. Not all the images I need big and large and it's, it's, it's not needed. So this camera is, is really great that you have that. You can shoot in RAW, S-RAW, M-RAW and JPEG the same and you can choose a big RAW and a small JPEG or a small RAW and a medium JPEG. You can change that. So that is something that I really love about it. It's, it's coming in handy all the time. What I also love is the system. Now, you've seen 
some of the lenses that I have here. I'm filming with the Sigma lens. Here's a Tamron zoom lens 2470. And so what I love about the Canon EF system is there are 100 million EOS cameras sold and there are 100 million EF lenses sold. What does it mean? It means that when I go on eBay, look at this guy, this is 1,800 and a couple of euros. So 1,900 euros. I paid 1,000 euros less. I paid 850. Why? Because eBay is full of it. When there are 100 million EF lenses sold, all the equipment you can buy on the used market if you don't need or don't want to buy new. So I bought the 85 for 850 and it's, it's selling now on eBay much more. It's about 1000. So I could sell it for more even now after one year of use. The 51.2 also, I, the new price is 1300 about and I paid 800 for it. And I can sell it now for 850, even though I've used it for a year. And in the end, I didn't pay anything for it if I sell it now. The 24 millimeter here that I have, uh, the new price is 1,400 to 1,600, something like this. I paid 650 for it on eBay. And I can sell it now for 800 without, uh, you know, using it for one year, two year, then selling it for the same price I paid for it. Why? Because the system is so long in existence and so worldwide presented that everywhere you can find cameras and lenses for it. So everything is cheap on the used market and you can usually sell it for the same price if it's still in the same condition. Now I'm not very nice with my equipment. I don't have any filter on here. I don't have a lens cap. I don't have a hood. So this camera goes like this in my bag. This camera goes like this in the same bag. They hit each other and it's not nice. Uh, and I shouldn't do it, but that's just uh, the way I do it. Uh, but if you care a little bit about it, you can use it, sell it for the same price. So even after one or two years of using it, you can sell it and you haven't paid anything for it. What else about the system is all the manufacturers uh, have something for the... You, you have Sigma lenses, Tokina lenses, Tamron lenses, Valimax lenses, uh, Zeiss lenses. All manufacturers create for Canon, for the EF uh, system, because it's just so big. So you can get nearly everything. You can get a super telephoto lens, you can get a super wide angle lens, no matter manual, autofocus. You can get all the kinds of flashes for your ca camera. The cheap young new flashes that I have, the expensive ones by Canon, you can get Pro Photo Gear, Alien Chrome, you can get any kind of external triggering, TTL, uh, high speed sync, that is all there from many companies and that hasn't been there for so many other companies. Now I remember when Fuji uh, had their cameras and everybody was switching to Fuji, there, were, there was a time where there was no real off-camera flash with power for the Fuji system. Like, like the uh, air remote by Profoto that was not there for Fuji. Now it is. Sony as well. They, the system, the Sony system is still young. Fuji is, is good, but it's still a little bit young. The, of course, the Canon EOS R is still young, so you always need an adapter to use all the lenses. The, the Nikon Z system, that is still young. You know, you can get adapters and all that, but the system in general of this camera, the 60, is very easy to get. This camera on eBay right now in Germany, I found it for 400 euros today. 400, someone else, 480, someone else, 530, in different conditions. 400 euros, 90,000 shots, 500 something euros, 18,000 shots. 18,000 shots is, is like new. It's very rarely used compared to 900,000. So it's very easy to get into it, very cheap, it's very durable. Uh, it will never let you down in my experience. I've never had a card fail on me, it only has one card slot, never had a fail on me. And um, the image quality, I'm not a technical guy, so I don't talk that much about it. I just want you to see the images and to me, these images work. I don't think that any better camera, for example, I have a, a video on my channel where I compare the Hasselblad, the, the most expensive camera of the world, 2006, $32,000 with the lens. Compare it with the Canon 6D. I use, I shoot the same thing one time with the Hasselblad and one time with the Canon 6D with the 51.2, shot wide open. 
to get a similar look and the images look very very similar in my opinion you can find it on my channel look for Hasselblad uh, you probably find it and so yeah what else can I say I mean I love the something that I love that you don't get by a spec cheat is the character the character is it's really lightweight you know when you when you have it here it really weighs very little it's small com in, compared to other DSLRs like a Canon 5D Mark III, Mark IV, Nikon D800 series. Very, very small, very light. Uh, the menu is very easy. There's not so many buttons. It's very, very to the point. It's, it's simplicity. Uh, it just works. It's beautiful to use. Uh, talking about video, it does video. It has a beautiful look with these lenses wide open, but I would not use it much for video. Today we have better options, especially the 6D Mark II that's filming now with the face detection, flip out screen, that's really nice. But if you want, I mean, you can film, but you should need a tripod or a, a monopod. You have to focus manually, which works, but uh, nowadays there are, there are more options, they're more comfortable. And so talking about editing, there are moments when I have an image that is too dark, I can easily put this up, uh, make it brighter. All the images you see are taken with the 6D edit it very quickly in a couple of seconds i take the images quickly i edit them quickly it's nearly about the same time you, when i'm in a shooting i make click 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 and that's it and the same speed i use when editing them it's all a it's all a question of a couple of seconds you will not see any image where it took me over 20 20 seconds uh, usually five seconds to 10 seconds for one image sometimes less rarely more <clears throat> and uh, yeah now let's take a look at the images so you see actually what you can get out of this camera what i got out of it everything i have financially lifestyle the joy i got out of this camera this is the camera that i started with 2013 everything i have these 1000 videos that we got here were all shot the photos with this camera i have other cameras here uh, I don't need them. I have the 6D Mark II. I don't need that either. These two are everything I need actually. These are my... Uh, this is the core of my photography. All the rest, all the other cameras is just... The Hasselblad, I don't need it. It's, it's it really ir irrelevant. The 6D Mark II to me is irrelevant. It doesn't... It, 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 there's no, no need, there's no use. I mean, I use it a lot, but I don't need it. Uh, these are... This is the core with the prime lenses and... Uh, 400 euros, I found it today, it's crazy. <laughs> so that's it.